There's just about no steel producer in South Africa today that is globally competitive, not us, not anyone else um, um, operating in the steel industry in the South Africa. So the question is, what changed? What is it actually fundamentally that has changed in the five years post-crisis to bring us into what is essentially quite a, a, yeah, a dire position across the industry? Now, what is interesting, though, is that it's not just South Africa. This is a global phenomenon. Steel producers are, are struggling across the globe. The two biggest drivers of um, steel industry performance are one, price, steel prices, biggest one, and two, volumes. Now, I want to show you a chart. It charts the consumption of steel in South Africa over that period, and if you look at the peaks, I mean, everybody in here knows about the cyclicality of, of the industry. This shows you very graphically what this looks like. All of those peaks, if you start to look, and we've put it in those bubbles um, at the top, when you look at those peaks, by and large, those were driven by some form of, of asset investment project. And in South Africa, frankly, they were all public sector investment projects. So if you look at this one, for example, this is the time that ESCOM was building Crickland, Arno, Hendrina, all of those power stations, and some of the big dams. And then it sort of reverts back to some sort of, um, well, long trend line. And then here, we were building Kuburg, Matla, uh, some of the bridges. And then again, it drops back. And you can see this line doesn't actually grow very much, a very gently sloping line upwards. Now, if you look at this fly up over here, that's the fly up pre-World Cup, when we just couldn't actually make enough steel to satisfy the industry, not here, not anywhere else in the, in the world, because the entire universe seemed at the time to be one giant construction uh, project. Now, what actually is most interesting about this particular chart is that if you look at this line, it starts at about 4 million tons, which is the, still used in totality in South Africa, not just from one company, and it ends just shy of 5 million tons. In 40 years, the steel industry in South Africa has grown from 4 to 5 million tons per annum, on average, okay? Apart from the peaks that I've just told you about. At this peak here, we flew up close to six million tons. So on the back of the various projects that were undertaken during the World Cup days, we actually had a one million ton, ton variation from the normal run rate of the country. But today, we're back at five million tons plus minus. Okay? And that is the size of this industry in this country, grown at a compound annual rate of 1.1% per annum. Now, just think of your own industry and think how you design a business model for an industry that does not grow or not much at all. But when it does grow, you do want to capture the peaks, all right, such as we got in here. And we've got customers in here, so I've got to be very careful what I say because very often when the industry is really hot and the market is running, we put customers in our location. We simply can't gear up fast enough to supply at the peak because of this phenomenon I've just told you about. So just business model, business structure becomes a real issue where you have an industry that doesn't grow. So now you go back to what actually happened. So you look at this, um, at this drop over here, okay? This drop corresponds to the 2008 global crisis. And so if I said to you pre-crisis, we were relatively happy. Post-crisis, we're still very much uh, plumbing the depths. This is the period in which we are now, and we haven't really, really uh, come out of it too much. Now, we, we describe this as falling off a cliff. You look at the growth, it's gentle, nice, easy. You look at how the industry typically, typically comes back from a peak, you can see that sharp fall off. These are not easy transitions for any company to manage. You would think, steel industry, this is your bread and butter, but actually, because you've got fixed costs, because you plan for your logistics and your trains and your, all of this, to try and change the business in a very quick space of time is just one of those inherent challenges of, um, of the steel industry. Nevertheless, to go back to, uh, to the 2008, um, to the 2008 story. Remember that because we in South Africa we could export, this was still a, uh, a seven million market in terms of production, but I'll come to that when I talk about, um, 
about the cost evolution. If you look at a slightly more granular <coughs> view of the industry and say, well, okay, so you've got five million tons that go into the industry, but where does it actually go? This view gives you the off takers. And in this big blue blob here in this bar is the construction sector, this, the building and construction sector. Traditionally, this is the biggest user of steel here as well as everywhere else. And we have depended on this particular industry to take two thirds of what we produce. Not just us, but all steel producers in South Africa. Now look at what has happened uh, with this particular industry. So not only have we fallen off from the peak to these <coughs> kinds of levels, but the construction industry has actually shrunk as a percentage of that. So if your biggest off taker starts to face the kind of significant headwinds that the building and construction sector has done since the 2009 global crisis, you can well imagine the major suppliers to that industry are, are also going to suffer. And so that was just another source of, um, of the stress that the industry has been, has been um, suffering.